welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday, and there's always room for one more. Come right this way, have a seat with me today in the corner booth one more time, celebrating our 103rd week. Sweeney, clear that floor. Katie, bar the door. Molly, put on another pot of Irish coffee and bring on the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. There's another full house today, not a chair to spare here at the Irish Roots Cafe. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, and you can reach me on my webpage anytime at irishroots.com, and you can also tune into our blog where you can... Uh, uh, click on various links and have a, maybe run into a little more information on uh, each podcast, what I'm talking about. And, of course, I've got, uh, gosh, altogether five different podcast feeds, one on song and recitation. This one's uh, genealogy, history, and curious news, and one on the Irish in America. So uh, you want to be sure to check all that out. It's all on my web page, uh, so that's a good place to start. Well, among today's topics... Arthur is the Irish family name of the day. We're searching for McDonough, Burke, and Quinn. Irish Genealogies by Keating is the book of the month. The Irish stop a famine outside of Ireland. A woman's gold medal for boxing in store at the next Olympics. And number six, mobile phones have now been used in flight for an Irish Airlines. And number seven, Ulster Heritage Newsletter, a uh, webpage of the week. Well, let me see. It's time to talk about what we got here. A few notes. Uh, I just got three or four today. Uh, the uh, Irish Song and Recitation uh, broadcast that I'm I'm getting ready to put on the second season of uh I may have to break and hold off this podcast for a week or two just to catch up with it. You know, uh, I always think I can do all these grand things, all these grand ideas, and when it comes right down to it, I run out of time. So I, I may have to alternate back and forth just to let you know what's going on. Uh, number two, John Sweeney tells me about his family back in Ireland, and uh, boy, he was a rich man about six, oh, about six uh, months ago or a year ago. That family home had gone up from about uh, $100,000 to $425,000 in value, uh, just like a lot of homes over here had. But now at last check, with all this uh, confusion go going on with finances and homes, that old home in Ireland is about down to its original value or just a little bit more. So a millionaire has been made and broken so quickly. Uh, number three, a lot of you are familiar with Peter Riley Adams, who's done shows with me uh, on this podcast and on the Irish Song podcast, and he's leaving soon with his group for Ireland, and I know they're going to have a real good time. We'll try to get him back on here as soon as he comes back. He'll have the real scoop, I'm sure. And number four, you know, I've noticed a lot of sessions are starting to pop up uh, in a lot of places more often, and a session is where... Uh, musicians will just drift into a restaurant, prearranged, of course, with the owner usually, uh, but they'll drift in and sit around in a little circle there, and they'll just start playing some old uh, traditional Irish tunes, and it's not real loud stuff. It's nice, you know, if they're in a restaurant, you can sit there and have a drink or have a bite, have a sandwich, and uh, it's real great background, makes you feel like you're back in time 100, 200 years. So uh, you might ask if there's any sessions going on in your town, and... Uh, if not, you might see about getting some of them started. It's a really good thing. Well, let me see. That reminds me, uh, let's pick a book of the month here. What are we going to do? We, we'll stay away from the counties again. We'll get back to those in a little bit. But uh, we'll make that. The book of the month will be Irish Genealogies. And that's the name of Volume 3 of our uh, History of Ireland by Jeffrey Keating, and I printed this one also separately just because it was so popular and there was so much information in it for uh, folks that want to know about their Irish family heritage and, and genealogy and some of the old pedigrees and uh, 
see what was written down 150, 200, 300 years ago instead of just what might have been put in a book today. It's always nice to go back to some of those earlier resources and see where some of these notions came from about your family. And I'll just mention, gosh, I'll put a lot, I'll put six or seven paragraphs on the uh, blog that detail the contents of that book more. Uh, but I'll just uh, run through the little, I'm looking at it real quickly here, run through a few things that might tell you what it's like. And it's, uh, uh, gosh, we, you know, I took the original index that was there. And this, this volume we're talking about, Irish Genealogies, has the complete original index to Keating's History of Ireland, plus some things that I added back, uh, gosh, I think it was 1980 or so, I did, reprinted this book, republished it, but I added... Uh, uh, some old Irish family trees, some settler family names, family locations, uh, maps and charts. Uh, gosh, uh, uh, and there are over a thousand families all together indexed in that volume. And uh, I added a new surname index to uh, to just this volume. It's not in the regular Keating's History of Ireland from uh, earlier publications of it over the last couple hundred years. And uh, uh, you got to remember that this book it contains some of those ancient topographical palms on the Irish families, and you'll you'll see reference to that uh, obliquely in a lot of resources, and that's where the the Irish families were written about in poetical form, and each of them had a stanza or so, and they wrote and they talked about where the family was and what they were known for, and maybe what their strengths were. And uh, I also threw in there, I put down the, the 50 most popular surnames in Ireland and Scotland and England and a list of the Danish names, the names from the Irish Book of Arms, uh, German Palatinate names. And uh, I tell you, I had a lot of fun putting that together. And it was one of the early books uh, that I did do, so I sure have fond memories of it. And it was well worth, uh, was well worth the time. Uh, now... In that book, you're also going to find a lot of ancient family trees uh, uh, that include locations of the family. And many of the old pedigrees are given, uh, oh, families like McCarthy and O'Sullivan uh, down there around Kerry and Cork and McGillicuddy and O'Donovan, uh, O'Keefe, O'Quinn, O'Day, uh, O'Brien of Thoman and McNamara. Uh, and there's a lot of pedigrees and the chief seat of the family and the just the exact location where they put them down at. And uh, you're going to find pedigrees, uh, oh, pedigrees of families like O'Carroll of Eli. And look, there's O'Boyle of Boyla and Mackie Hagen and O'Connor Rowe and O'Connor Don and O'Flaherty. And here, what, Chapter 10, who do they got? Uh, O'Cavanaugh and Fitzpatrick, O'Dwyer and O'Connor uh, Fowley. And uh, chapter 11 gives the pedigree of O'Driscoll. I tell you, if you're interested in the history or in the families, uh, it's a real good thing to look at, and it doesn't take you a year to get through. You know, you can get through it fairly simply. Uh, uh, and like I said, it's the, it's the specially published third volume of Keating's history that I added a bunch of things to. It's uh, on the web page, of course, and it's a nice hardbound with a sewn binding so you can open and close it a thousand times and, uh, and still be in good shape. Well, that about does it for the book of the, uh, the, book of the month. And that reminds me that uh, there's a world's top, the world's top female boxer was uh, from Ireland uh, here recently. And do you know who she is or what the name might be? Well, stay tuned. You can find out if you're related or not. You might have some uh, some fine ladies in your families that might uh, might be taken up the fine sport of pu pugilism. I'm not sure, but this will tell you if it's in the bloodline. But now it's time to raise our eyes skyward, give thanks, and ask for help. Here are today's Magnificent Seven. Well, number one, new member Grace Hall of Boone, North Carolina. She's looking for her great-great-grandparents. Uh, John Quinn, Michael Quinn, and Thomas Quinn are the furthest back she can get. And they were from, uh, she says, from Corgory, Ballyboffy, Donegal, and William Gillespie bought the family land. Well, that's always nice to know who took over the land. That can help you trace back uh, a lot of things. Uh, number two, new member Diane Kennedy of Orlando, Florida, uh, researching the Arthur family. 
And we think, she says that she thinks she has them traced to uh, County Clare, and her family came to the States in the 1860s. And she's had some trouble tracing the Ireland records in Ireland. And uh, old Grandpa didn't speak much, most, much about the family. And, you know, that's uh, quite often true. Same thing in one of my families, uh, my dad's side. My mom's side, I think they talked plenty. But my mom, my dad's side, they sure didn't. And uh, it says uh, he was orphaned as a young boy, so most of what he reported was based on his maternal line. And that was the Colton slash Nichols who raised him. Uh, number three, uh, Michelle Wesson of Estero, Estero Florida from uh, Waterford, Clonmel area, Bolins. So it's the Bolin family she's trying to key in on. And she says, Grandfather James left around 1910-ish, and his parents were John Bolin and Catherine Burke. And also looking for a Hogan from Dungarvan, and she says, Michael Francis Hogan was born in 1856, and that's part of the line. And they came to Boston around 1873. So they're looking to find the families of the McDonough's and Catherine Burke. So anybody out there can be in help, be of help, just let me know and I'll get you in touch. Uh, number four, Diane Goldie of Copperas, Texas. Your Claire Galway and Irish Families uh, books have shipped. Thanks for those three orders. It sure helps. Uh, number five, Maureen O'Day of Alexandria, Virginia. Your families of County Clare, Ireland has shipped. Uh, Christine Dinaway Riley of Kalamazoo, uh, Michigan. Your Missouri Irish, the original history of the Irish in Missouri has shipped. And number seven, Teresa Lynn of Portage, Michigan, your county Sligo, Ireland genealogy and beginner's guide has shipped. Boy, that's just nice. That keeps up every week. I sure do appreciate it. And that reminds me to say thank you to everybody here today on the list. And uh, of course, anybody that supports what we're doing, either by uh, through interviews or through buying a book or becoming a member, uh, I sure do appreciate it. And uh I'm working on getting a new membership page. We're just trying to find something that works just right. And we've got a few, uh, a few family emergencies that are, uh, uh, making, uh, progress, having to put that back a little bit, but it's sure on the schedule. We're going to get there. Uh, let me see that makes us move on to what are we going to do? We're going to do the Irish family name of the day. Well, the Irish family name of the day is Arthur, and we're going to spell it A-R-T-H-U-R. -R. And this is uh, family history is in honor of member Diane Kennedy, who's one of the magnificent seven for today and a new member. And you know you can do a lot of things to that name. You can put an S onto the end of it and make it Arthur's, or you can uh, put an E onto the end of the name, and you can do both of those things to a whole lot of names in Ireland. So remember that especially when you're, when you're in different time periods, people might have taken to uh, spelling things differently, or they might have just had to guess. And, of course, you can always add a Mick or a Mac to the front of the name, and it becomes MacArthur or MacArthur. And uh, if you take a look at the Master Guide to the Various Spellings of Irish Family Names, it's in uh, spelling group 2097 and 1218. Now let's move on now to go to the... Uh, Book of Irish Families, Great and Small, the master volume to my 34 books set on Irish families. And we'll just take a few notes from that entry in that book. And what does it tell us? Well, it tells us that the uh, Arthur family name could come from Scotland originally, uh, from the name of MacArthur. And that's pretty well established that that can happen. And the name is also found in Ireland prior to the Norman invasions of the 12th century. And you're finding it uh, really quite early on in County Limerick, Ireland, too. And if it, they're there, you know, those old Vikings came into Limerick and founded that town, I think. So uh, they might have been Vikings if you find them down there. I don't know. And, of course, from Limerick, they crossed into Clare. Uh, and here you have over 20, over 20 Arthurs served as mayors of the town of Limerick. So if you've got some mayors or some politicians here in America... That could well be right in your line. And we also take a look at the 19th century birth index. And uh, 
you know, that S on the name, making it Arthur's. There was actually more with the S on the end of the name than not, which surprised me. Uh, and uh, the name was real common then in County Antrim and County Tyrone. And if you keep on looking, you're going to see uh, that some of the name came, came from Ireland and settled uh, in France in the 18th century. And you might consider that that's because they got in trouble in Ireland. I'm not sure, but that sounds like it's a possibility. And, uh, you know, today, if you come all the way over to I America from Ireland, you're going to find that that surname is one of the top 1,000 most numerous surnames in America as well. So there's no scarcity of the family here. Well, that's it for the Book of Irish Families notes. Uh, now we're going to move on to the, which one? The Irish Family Coats of Arms, and we'll see. We're going to look it up in the Irish Book of Arms uh, that I published a few years back. And what do we find? Well, we find illustrated arms for uh, the Arthur family of Glanamara County Clare. Well, that's good. And the Arthur family of Glanamara is given to come originally from the uh, name of Arturas, and that's just from the Book of Arms now. That's what they're saying. And it said they held lands in Limerick where they were lost in the Cromwellian Wars. And uh, then is when they moved over into County Clare. And the family claims Irish descent, and it was certainly on the Irish side uh, when they got into the battles with the occupiers of the land there or those who came to occupy it. So there could be some truth in that. And that reminds me, coming up later, got a quick note on uh, the Irish stopping another famine. And this famine was not in Ireland. And it just happened recently. So you know what? An Irishman has a long memory. And in this case, that's a very good thing. Oh, uh, the last thing we'll do on Arthur, you know, if you go to the free master index search of Irish names on my webpage, you'll find uh, the family name listed 133 times. And that includes these examples. Number one, we find Arthur with and without an E on the end of the name in the census of 1659, for starters. And then, of course, you find him in the Families of County Clare, Ireland book. And then uh, you find it a couple times in the Limerick book, and uh, the Families of County Limerick even has a Dr. Arthur in that book. And uh, number four, Milesian Families of Ireland. That book shows MacArthur, and there's uh, first initial J. Arthur in the Families of County Dublin, along with quite a few other Arthurs. And uh, number six, there's a MacArthur in the Mac, Mac and O names from the 17th to 20th century. That's a book I don't cite too much, but it's sure got a lot of surname information in it. And Fitz Arthur is found in the County Galway, Ireland Genealogy and Family History Notes book. So there's another variant spelling. You got that Fitz on the front of the name. Very interesting. Well, what are we going to do now? I think it's time we move to the uh, websites of the week. Well, let's take a look here. We've got a good blending of the websites and the curious news and notes this week, so I'll hit the websites first. Uh, we've got them on our blog, so you can just click on them and go there. Or you could just type in a blind search of the words, and uh, you'd probably come up with it. Uh, but we've got, uh, what, five of them today? Number one, the Arthur Cashin family of Baltimore, Maryland, which also includes the Arthur family, which originated in County Clare, which might tie into today's research. Uh, number two, a Bray boxer set for woman's gold medal in the Olympics. Uh, that's, a, that's another web page we picked out today on our website. And uh, number three, the UN declares Irish a dying language. And uh, number four, a famine dad thanks the Irish. And we'll have more on all of those in just a second here. Uh, number five, Ulster Heritage, all things Ulster. It looks like there's a new uh, new little newsletter or magazine, so that's good for all you from up north uh, uh, interested in Ulster history and genealogy and DNA. They've got a lot of things going, it looks like. And last but not least, number six, our video of the week on the, on the web is uh, KC Irish. And that's the first history of uh, the Irish in Kansas City uh, as written uh, back in 1984. That's what that video is all about. And I've got it on YouTube. Uh, 
Plus, it's the video of the week on our uh, uh, iTunes podcast, and you can get it right on the web page. So that's not too tough at all. That'll be good for everybody. Uh, okay, well, now we're going to move on to explain a little bit about more those, and we're going to move on to curious news and notes. Well, what do we have here today? Number one, a 57-year-old Ethiopian uh, famine surveyor, Abria Asafa, thanks the Irish aid program for bringing his valley back to life after drought had brought famine and turned it into a wasteland. And if you check that uh, uh, link we've got up there on a, on a, a page for uh, uh, the web, you can go to the web and read more about that. And that's, that's a good story. It tells how disaster can really make something happen good a, a hundred years later. Uh, number two, the UN says that the Irish language is definitely endangered because the young no longer learn it as the first language at home growing up. There's a lot of people in America and around the world and in Ireland uh, studying the Irish language. And uh, uh, so there's a lot more people being exposed to bits and pieces of it, but they say there's nothing like learning a language when you're young, growing up. It just sticks in your mind in a way uh, uh, it, it does no other way. Even if you're good at the language and you learn it when you're seven or eight, if you grew up with it from birth, uh, you're just a native speaker, and that makes a big difference. Of course, they've been saying Irish language was uh, gone for a long time. I know back in the 1960s and 50s, it's been, uh, it's just hanging on and there's just enough spirit to keep it going, but uh, it's looking awful tough to keep it up as a real language, but it just may happen. Number three, mobile phones are now being used uh, in flight for Irish Airlines. I think that's Ryanair they have it. And of course, that could be good. Or if you want a nice quiet ride, that could be just what you didn't want to hear uh, but in general, communications are good. Just remember to use good etiquette and you don't have to shout. And, uh, you know, you could lower your voice a little, maybe turn your head away from a big group of people, let them relax. They don't need to know what you were having for dinner, uh, tonight or what you had two weeks ago or, or about, about Aunt Tilly. So, uh, uh, that's just a note of caution there, but it's good to hear that progress is just going on a pace. Number four, uh, Oh, and I've got a link on the, the blog to that, too. You can learn more about it. That's in the uh, independent.ie. Number four, Katie Taylor is the woman's world champion boxer, and she stands a good chance to be in the 2012 Olympics as a gold medal winner if the sport is included that year. And any of you Irish Taylors out there, uh, I just wonder if you, any of your uh, girls have the uh, pugilistic intentions if they've ever decked you and you never got up, then you can be sure you're part of this Taylor clan, maybe, huh? I don't know. Number five. With less than a month to go, reread that the Irish Taoiseach uh, Cowan had not yet been invited to Washington for St. Patrick's Day. And he's been, in, they've been invited, uh, the Taoiseach has been invited, gosh, for years and years and years. And uh, surely this was just a minor oversight. And by now it's probably it's probably well been taken care of by uh, uh, the U.S. president. So uh, let's just hope that that tradition continues, and I'm sure it will. That was in the irishtimes.com. I have a link to that on the web as well on our blog. And, boy, I think that does it for the day. We've had a long one. And uh, I've also got a little little page on MySpace as the uh, Irish Roots Cafe, and I started up a page on uh, uh, Facebook as Michael Laughlin and uh, – I'm just going to see if any of those modern things work well for me or if I'm uh, if I'm past my prime and I can't catch on to the whole deal. But it's sure fun playing with them and learning how to get on there. Uh, uh, so feel free to jump on and hunt me up. Uh, that'll do it, though. Remember to send your comments by clip it, clicking the contact link on our webpage at www.irishroots.com or send by mail to our American address, the Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave your message or report on things in your part of the world when you call my phone recorder at 816-256-3360 and you can Skype me directly at Irish Roots Cafe. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. 
and away.